Okay, so I wanted to use today to um, flesh out at least a little bit more, um, albeit in a still somewhat incomplete way, the story of profunctor optics from a categorical perspective and reinforce some items that we had talked about last time. Um, reinforce, but build up and, and use it to point to um, the deeper theory, even if I don't fully explicate it. So uh, to do this, I'll switch here to the slides. And um, I want to note that um, what I'll be speaking about today does draw on three main sources, um, only one of which I've actually asked you to, to review. One of them is the Jeremy Gibbons talk on profunctor optics. Um, uh, a, a second one that's of absolutely central importance to kind of the categorical picture I provide here is this talk by uh, Brendan Fung, um, A Categorical Introduction to Profunctor Optics, which uh, curiously enough is broken up into three parts of about 18 minutes each or 19 minutes each. Um, I think it was posted maybe before they had um, uh, ability to post longer videos um, uh, within the MIT group that posted it. But it's a, it's a very fast paced, but, um, but good look at sort of a, a categorical view on, on profunctor optics um, that tries to summarize work by Mitchell Riley uh, on the same topic, which is very dense. Uh, and then thirdly, there's a talk by Bartosz Mieluski on profunctors that includes a little bit of this material and a broader set on, on profunctors. Um, so the idea that ideas that we had touched on last time was that, are that uh, optics provide this way of functionally manipulated data and data structures, but it's really more generally this kind of way of going back and forth between pieces in the whole. And there's several types of optics, uh, lenses, Prisms and adapters are three we talked about. We didn't talk about traversals or algebraic optics um, and uh, kaleidoscopes. There's various um, other optics, which are actually quite interesting. And for the sake of some of our work, like involving data analysis, quite useful. Um, and uh, I would note in particular um, the great or the kaleidoscope as being relevant for data manipulation and access in really neat ways. Um, and actually there was um, a former student of undergrad who was in my course. I think he actually may have been in Xiaoyan's version when she took uh, to, uh, the um, 478.16 in 2016 or 2017 probably. Uh, Chris Penner, who's gone on to write a book on, on lenses, um, lenses by example, which is actually uh, a really neat practical look at this. And more recently, he's, he's created a column on al algebraic lenses that shed light on their use in, in data analysis. Um, Chris is doing more or less full-time work now with uh, functional programming, I think over in Europe, Germany, last I heard. Um, so um, lenses, prisms, and adapters are three in which we focus because they're particularly simple and um, useful and common in their needs. And the point that um, this first video was making is that uh, the original form that optics took didn't allow for nice composition and uh, they weren't closed under composition. So if you combined, uh, if you had a, uh, a lens which um, where the data structure inside itself had a prism and you wanted to use them together, it would be neither a lens nor a prism. Um, uh, and uh, it turns out that um, this is a very common need to kind of nest these things, hierarchically embed them. And um, uh, it, it's quite nice to represent these instead with profunctors. And that's what that Gibbons talk was all about is using the, the profunctor version of them. Um, and here in Haskell, profunctors uh, are, are arrows and they can just be composed or rather they're functions and they can be composed. 
Um, and it turns out the profuncta version can be elegantly specified, um, can, can undergo composition, and is closed. So you combine two and you get another one, and um, you don't get this weird situation where you combine two when you get something that's, that, that is sort of undefined. Um, they're, they allow both heterogeneous and homogeneous composition by embedding, by nesting. Uh, and they're readily converted to and fro traditional um, representations. And I noted that optics uh, can play a big role within uh, a number of different areas, functional programming, dynamical systems, which is one of our major points of interest, machine learning, bidirectional programming, databases, and game theory are, are some examples. Um, okay. And uh, last time I noted um, in something that will become more um, relevant for us here, that optics in general, whether they're lenses, prisms, ISOs, um, they, uh, particularly lenses and prisms, ISOs do sort of as a, as a kind of a degenerate case, they have this sort of flavor to them. Um, there's a, a way of converting an A into an A prime that's part of a bigger picture. If by plugging in one of these, we can then have a map from S to S prime, which includes going through this, but also includes a parallel path. Um, and I noted that where you have this kind of bifurcation or, or, or merging, really you're having a, a tensor product. We saw that in wiring diagrams and it's true here. Um, these two things are tensored together uh, as input into this, this R. And depending on what R is, and L are, um, uh, what, what's in L and R, you'll get, um, you can get different, uh, different optics, what's in this kind of bin here. Um, so lenses, we saw that, you know, we retrieve a piece from the hole using this get, and we have this set or put where we take a hole and an updated piece that we want to have when we get an updated hole. Um, and uh, I noted that there's some lens laws here, although I think there's, um, again, I spotted a, an, an issue with one of these here, um, as it was uh, phrased, as I recall. Um, but um, these lenses are associated uh, with different semantics, uh, or I shouldn't say different semantics, like the, the, what these terms mean, the, these, uh, how we name those, um, what they correspond to in our underlying system is different for different uses of lenses. For example, for data structures, we get and we set or put. Um, for dynamical systems, we might have a readout function and we might have an update function that takes the current state of the system, some input, it gets a new state. The readout just reads output out of the state. Um, and uh, similarly for prisms, um, we might have different semantics. So for prisms, and, and I did correct this since last time, we have a build uh, which can take um, a possible piece and create a hole out of it. Um, so this might create a, have a banana and it creates a fruit um, from that. Or you have a apple and it creates a fruit. Um, peas are the kind of different possibilities here. And match here takes a hole, a fruit, and it says, look, it's either a banana or it's a non-banana fruit. Um, and these are the two possibilities. You kind of get, um, you, you get out uh, the, the possibilities here uh, from, from within this. Um, and uh, in a, a, a rough optical metaphor, I noted that it kind of separates a beam of light into its, uh, its components. So here we have this pair on the left. Uh, and here it's on the right. Um, 
And uh, we noted here, and again, sorry for the first of several insultingly low resolution uh, uh, images that I've, I've, I've taken from some of these videos. Um, but you know, we, we have a reel and we ask, okay, is it an integer? If so, we have an integer, other it's, otherwise it's a reel. And I would note that this is a plus here and this, um, this might be uh, actually a, a plus uh, in this context. Um, we might, that might be the, the meaning of this times within, uh, within that context that I have to think about that. Um, here again, uh, you see this kind of uh, plus context. If we, if we see uh, the relationship between the interior boxes and the exterior boxes, where the exterior box has to be bound to the output of an interior box, so that's y out being bound to this, and and then. Um, uh, and then uh, w an input for an interior box has to come from either an output of an interior box or uh, a, an input from the whole thing. So Y is on the outside, then we have the X in the inside. Um, these X's, these are these X's. And we're gonna come back to this a lot next week. Uh, uh, in the next two weeks, really, for dynamical systems, where these are wiring diagrams. So this form of a dynamical, uh, this form of a wiring diagram has this equation kind of reminiscent of a, uh, of a prism here. Um, and I do think this should probably be actually a, a plus here, because yes, of course, it has to be a plus, because the, the, um, Co the the op the dual of a product is a sum, and here you're just reversing the arrows, and so yes, it's a plus. Um, that's right, and it's a plus here. It's a plus here. Um, uh, so here the input to this is either this or it's that, um, and and hence you get this uh, this form here. Uh, okay, so just as a reminder, profunctor summarize ways of turning A's into B's or getting from an A to a B, right? Um, there are ways of getting B from A. Um, and uh, as a reminder, um, they lift uh, just like a functor lifts, a profunctor, which is a type of functor, a functor from C op cross C to SAD or in general to a, a V category, but, but we'll deal here, we'll set. It can lift things, but while with functors, we lifted a single function um, here, because we're operating on pairs of things, A and B, these are the objects. We have pairs of morphisms or in Haskell functions. Um, and the important thing is one is contravariant and one is covariant. Um, so we have F going from A prime to A, but G going from B prime to B, um, going, um, excuse me, uh, uh, B to B prime, it should be B to B prime. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's going in the opposite direction. Um, so this is, again, if we're making an omelet uh, from a recipe that says used cracked eggs and chopped celery, just chopped celery, ch chopped um, uh, cilantro, um, uh, and uh, it goes into an omelet in the pan, uh, and we want to extend it uh, by having it take whole eggs and fresh cilantro, we need to go from those two cracked eggs and, and uh, get ourselves to uh, slice cilantro. So we have to do things before it that will take what we have and go into that. So if you wanna turn an A prime into a B, um, 
we have to start upstream and get us to an A. By contrast, if we want to have something that will turn an A into a B prime, um, uh, we, we need to extend downstream. We need to get from the B to the B prime. So it works in, in opposite ways there. Um, and lifting within a traditional functor is covariant. You know, if we want to lift a if if we want to lift a function that maps ints to bools, to say whether it's negative, for example, and we want to apply it to a list of int to get a list of bools, it needs to be something that turns ints into bools. It goes in the same direction. If we have something that goes ints to bools, and that will allow us to take lists of ints to list of bools. Um, we can get a contravariant functor there um, in some cases, as, as you saw through an, um, an exercise. So here, um, if we have this way of turning A's into B's, which is what, what this is, we can get a way of turning A primes into B primes by pre-composing with F, by doing F before PAB. That will get us to A, then we can get our B, and then we perform G. Um, and uh, this is something, therefore, by lifting, we could turn something that takes A's into B's into something that takes A primes into B primes. OK. Um, and uh, the hum, the hum profunctor does this in spades, right? Um, here's the hum profunctor applied to BC. It gives us all morphisms from B to C. And if we lift with the Hom profunctor uh, F and H, then we'll get all morphisms from A, that's upstream of B, to D, that's downstream of C, um, because F goes from A to B, uh, and, and uh, H goes from uh, C to C to H here. Um, so uh, this is is something that will sort of get us to that um, to that to that point downstream. You notice that H came from C to D, but F came from A to B. It came in in this contravariant way. Um, this way that gets us to our starting point, whereas this one gets us to from our destination to where we need to go. And it's very natural if you think of it in this path finding way. I need to get to the subway stop to take the train to the subway stop closest to my friend's house, and then I need to walk to the friend's house. It, we almost don't think about the contravariant aspects of it. Now, um, uh, in Jerry McGiven's talk, he notes that Functions are examples of proof functors. You can have functions, so the arrow operator um, represent a proof functor. And so um, here, um, we can, if we have, um, if we have a, an arrow operator um, uh, and it's uh, operator H, that's like one of these, um, unfortunately, it's, I have this H here, but it's one of, of these ones here. And then we have a function F and a function G, where F goes from A to B, and, and G goes from the destination to D. Then we get something that's just composed like this. F occurs before G and then H, just like, um, oh. Uh, uh, oh, okay. F is the, yeah. Um, uh, sorry. Um, uh, yes, that's right. So this is the thing we're, that we have here and we're lifting it using F and, and this thing before and this thing, um, these two things. Uh, and, uh, and therefore this one is pre-composed with it and this one is post-composed with it, um, this guy here. This one occurs in the middle, just like this occurred in the middle of this. 
but the paths go all the way. Okay. Um, so func or ordinary functions are an instance of this profunctor. We can write dimap for them, something that lifts it uh, in this sort of way to go from this to this. And we can also do that for other things, like things that return uh, a set of, of uh, values, for example, um, which is, uh, is, is kind of nice. Okay, so in terms of the profunctor representation, I had noted last time that lenses and prisms uh, both have this kind of flavor um, that, and in fact, all, all optics can be put into this framework where uh, we can represent them in this sort of parallel way. We saw this earlier with this. So there's going to be a link directly and then some sort of parallel link. Let's take a look at this for lenses. So for lenses, we, we have, this is our link for the pieces. And if we put it in the context of the whole, we get a map from W to W prime, we get a map of the holes. Um, so if we can just complete this piece, then we have an entire circuit that lets us map W's into W primes in, a, in a, a, an according way. In a, in a way that corresponds, um, in other words, um, um, is given by, by this link. This link ends up determining what this broader mapping is from W to W prime. Okay, uh, and how did this work? Well, with the whole, we can get a piece, and then that piece can be mapped into P prime using this component. If we have this F, we can map it here. And then we put, that piece together with this hole, which is brought over unchanged using put to get W prime. That's how that worked. And so one thing just sort of goes over unchanged or unscathed and one part we connect with this connector is the idea. Um, and prisms are similar uh, here. Um, we have uh, a match. And we have uh, a build here. Uh, and the, the match goes, uh, it can stand here and the builds uh, can stand here. And uh, for the case of match, basically uh, we can either get uh, a W prime out or we can get a via this way. So really this should be, I think uh, judging by my realization of this mistake, I think this should actually be a plus here. Um, and I will just uh, fumble. Um, so uh, I'd like to turn this uh, get this in a, here we go. So boom. Um, and similarly, this one should be a plus here. And it's unfortunate, but um, something like that. Yeah. And this one will be something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, So match gets uh, either a W prime or a P, and then we can map P uh, to a P prime. Uh, and using builds, we could turn that into a W prime. So if we go this route, we get a W prime this way. If we go this route, we get a W prime this top, this top way through build. Um, uh, excuse me, this is through build. This is via um, match directly, W prime. So once again, we have this way of turning Ws into W primes if we have this way of turning uh, Ps into, uh, into Ws. Okay, um, good. So continuing on here, oops. Um, okay, uh, mumble. Um, 
So I'll do the chat. Uh, and it turns out that you can put ISOs in this if you just stack these two things together. So with ISOs, we can go from a B to an A, or we can go from an A prime to a B prime. And if you look at it this way, um, you can have a uh, something which maps from a B to a B prime. How? You do B to an A through R, and then you map A to A prime, and then you do A prime to B prime through S, and it lifts it um, uh, in this sort of way. So we can, given F, we can get a B to a B prime. This is just like the Hom profunctor. This pre-composes with R and post-composes with the S. Uh, it allows us to turn, go from a, um, something that maps from an A to an A prime to a B to a B prime. Unfortunately, with things renamed, but it's like going, having something that goes from an A to a B and being able to go from an A prime to a B prime. Um, uh, the, the use of A prime and B prime here is a little bit different than in that one, but um, the idea holds. Okay. Um, so the gist of profunctor optics is a profunctor summarizes, it can be viewed as summarizing these ways of turning X's into Y's. Um, and in SAD, it, it can be viewed as kind of enumerating them um, or indicating a set of ways that you can turn X's into Y's. Um, now, a profunctor optic is something that's as we say, quantified over profunctor. So it'll work for whatever profunctor. It's saying you substitute in your profunctor here, your way of getting from P to P primes. I will give you a corresponding way of getting W's to W primes, a way that's derived from that. That um, may not be the same, but it's a, it's a way of getting from W's to W primes. Um, so a profunctor optic maps each specific way of turning an A into an A prime into a corresponding specific way of turning a whole, a B, into a modified whole B prime. Um, how it does that depends on this, this specific uh, profunctor. Uh, and what Brendan Fong comments is, optics are wrappers described in two parts. Um, one connects the items directly, and the other outputs or inputs a combination of values. Uh, and what's really neat is that beyond just profunctors, they allow you to quantify this over any profunctor, and they come in these different forms. I mean, any old profunctor can do this uh, by pre-composing with F and post-composing with G, and that's great. But what we're doing with profunctor optics is we can choose our profunctor. We can choose our way of saying, what does it mean to, to summarize turning A's into B's? Does it mean to summarize their cost? Does it mean to summarize how the particular routes, flight, boat, um, car, uh, what have you, um, train to get from Saskatoon to Seattle? Um, or, or does it mean um, to give you whether it's possible to get? You could do any of those uh, in principle here for, because it operates for any profunctors. Um, okay, so that's, that's the idea. It's, um, it's quantified over, over profunctors. And it, it turns out there's gonna be something called a coend that allows us to do that. that we're not gonna go into in detail today. Probably would have, we would have gone into it in detail if we had continued the MIT course, but we got off partway through to, to take our look at profunctors. But eventually they come around to discussing coans at the, uh, appropriately enough, at the end of that course. Um, they discuss ends and coans. Um, so in Haskell, um, a profunctor is quantified over it, it's a type constructor that, that has this um, type, uh, 
type synonym here, I think, essentially, which, which basically takes uh, a P, a profunctor, um, an optic is, it takes a profunctor and an AB type and an ST type. And this is a mapping from PAB to PST. Um, so uh, given a PAB, we can get a PST. This should sound familiar. It's for the same piece, right? Um, so given a PAB, you can get a PA prime, B prime. Same basic idea, um, same P uh, that, that you have, and that's the nature of, of optics. And Jeremy Gibbons shows it like this. So we want to get something which can map, can summarize ways of getting from S's to T's. And we can do it by ways of summarize, but by way of a thing that summarizes how to get from A to B. Uh, and critically, it's a morphism, it's a function here in Haskell. And that allows us to compose it, which is very nice. Um, and composition here is enabled by taking um, nesting of the two. And this is going to, again, be something we see exactly in wiring diagrams. We, um, if we have a lens uh, that gives the mapping, so let, let's go back and, and do a lens here. If we we have a lens like this, but then we want to have a, a function here from P to P prime, which is itself a lens and going even deeper into the data structure. Maybe this outer one just reaches in one level and this, this inner one reaches in another level, or maybe this inner one is a, uh, involves a, a prism and this outer one involves a lens or what have you. Um, we can do that. Um, and this shows kind of the picture all we're doing is we're kind of substituting it in, nesting it inside the outer one, nesting the inner one inside the outer one. And I've labeled it in lowercase for the inner one, um, where W to W prime serves as the P to P prime for the outer one. And then that allows us to map from W to W prime. And um, optics can be expressed in these string diagrams um, where the tensor will depend on the context. So I think for prism, it's a plus. For um, the case of lenses, it's a times. Uh, now, and this is where it's gonna get um, uh, more, much, much rougher. Um, and I didn't, I didn't have time to do this full justice, but neither do I have the deep understanding to do it full justice. But the issue here is that optics um, can be viewed um, in two different ways. One way is, is kind of thinking about them through this, this diagram, which captures this pattern, this pattern of, you know, involves something in parallel with, um, with this direct mapping. So we have direct mapping and then we have a parallel mapping a mapping in parallel with it which allows us to map the holes um w h o l e um this is the hole like h o l e that we have to fill in um and, and that's nice but an optic th there's there's subtlety here uh, because what an optic allows us to do is to recognize um, so the semantics of optics allow us to recognize that if we kind of divide this up, we think of this as a wiring diagram, we divide it up, just like those examples I showed with wiring diagrams, seeming to have some ambiguity based on where you slice it up, but actually because of the rules of symmetric monoidal categories, the ambiguity was moot. It didn't make a difference for the outcome, which way you sliced it up. Yes, you could read it differently, but you get the same result. So it is with the optics. I mean, you could say, well, okay, there's a mapping F that occurs along this path. 
that could occur on this side of things, on kind of the A side of, of this mapping. Um, and you kind of are sticking both routes together and the A and the F are on the same side. Or you can get the F on the other side. So you're sticking them together. This is the A side. This is just a clear path and the F occurs up on the upper side. This is not very effective. Um, and the A prime is down here. So we could divide it up that way. And what this, um, what the realization here is these are the same. They're in the same equivalence class. They, they don't count as different, in other words. They're the same thing, just, just you know, the same exact computation is what optics are expressing through this expression. You may be surprised to see these integral signs, but this is actually a coend. Um, and a coend is written as an integral sign. Um, the motivation for writing it as an integral sign is more than skin deep because it's kind of like an infinite product or a potentially infinite product for all objects in C. Yeah, could be in infinite set, um, maybe finite. We are taking a mapping between S and M cross A. Um, you could kind of think of the M as occurring up here and this tensoring is occurring here. So it's M cross A. Um, and then a mapping from M cross A into S. Um, uh, here, so, oh, sorry, M cross A prime and into S. And, and we're taking this, this product. And uh, this, this is a HOM set. That's a HOM set. Okay. Um, and if we do this, the co-end is sort of chunking them up as different possibilities here. Um, for, for what you get. You get any sort of combination of these, but it's not just saying there th you, you get any one of these because there's a, what's called an equivalence relation here. It's quotiented. There's certain of these that don't count as different. Um, it's like, I've seen that before, don't count it as different. And these two don't count as different. They're viewed as the same by the co -ed. Coens are really cool and they allow you to do this. They allow you to sort of um, have all these possibilities, but, but not double count duplicates, not count things that are functionally the same. And there's a structured way to do that, um, that they accomplish. Uh, Coens are like this big discrete, uh, this big uh, disjoint union, um, but where you say, oh, we saw that one before, or uh, we saw basically that before, so we're going we're not going to add it again. And that's that's what this thing is. And it's basically saying, look, you have a category C. Um, this is all possible mappings of this form where you have M up here and and A to A prime down here. That that's what an optic is in general. And so lenses, what do they have going on? Well. They have going on down here uh, a get, and they have over here a put operation um, that takes this and, and puts it in there. Uh, prisms, by contrast, have a match over here uh, in, in where L is. And we have on the map from A prime to S, we... Um, Sorry, we have a, um, a build operation. So these optics um, are, you can, you can phrase, phrase them as, as kind of these mappings which look like this and which have this equivalence that it doesn't matter where F is on which side of it it's located. It'll treat it as the same. Um, for each of these things. So this is one way to conceptualize um, optics. So it's kind of 
the denizens of this um, uh, of this universe, of this zoo of possibilities over all objects in C of these different possibilities, where these are kind of mappings um, that occur from in this um, monoidal product of this and this, um, or of uh, M and, and, and A prime. Um, so we could think of we could think of optics uh, in this regards, um, and and that's useful. Um, they this has the flavor of a direct connection and then some indirect connection up here um, that goes about it in in some other way. Um, but what Brendan Fong tries to do in that. Um, uh, within that um, uh, that video uh, that I showed here is uh, parts one through three is to kind of unpack this in an additional way. And this comes out of Mitchell Riley's work directly and his uh, categories of optics paper, um, which is very nice and, and can be found on X archive. Um, and again, I, I don't want to, fully explicate this, but I'll give some, um, some flavor of it. So one of the things that involves, importantly, is this um, categorification of profunctors. So within category theory, there's this extremely frequent popping up between levels. So on the one hand, you're dealing with profunctors down here as mappings and thinking about their pieces and so on. Um, uh, and then, then you pop up a level and just say, look, they're profunctors. Uh, and the mappings between them are natural transformations. So if you have a profunctor P and another profunctor R, we could think of them as being an arrow between them if there's a natural transformation. Now, how does that work? Well, um, if you think a profunctor, here we're just con concentrating on non-enriched categories. So a profunctor is just a mapping from C off cross C into actually, okay. So here we're we're just dealing with C even. It's a restriction, not C off cross D, um, into set. Okay. So a profunctor is mapping it into set, like the home profunctor maps um in C off cross C into set. So given to any objects, uh, you can get the set of morphisms between them. Um, and given to morphisms, one flipped around, because uh, it's in C op and one not, we can get a set of all morphisms going from that upstream to the to the downstream element. So if we if we have uh, uh, that that's what this, this profunct, uh, profunctors do. So if we have this category here, um, C up cross C and mapping it to, and, and uh, a profunctor serves as a functor um, going from C up cross C for each of these objects here, it turns it into an object inside. And for each of the morphisms here, um, which is, F going the opposite way, G going this way, it turns it into a mapping between sets. How, how to map the set of morphisms from A to B into the set of morphisms from A prime to B prime. Mm. Um, that's what this would be if this were, uh, uh, well, I, I think actually in general for, for a profunctor, yeah. Um, uh, so this is a profunctor. And if we had another profunctor Q, we could imagine a natural transformation between them. And given any object in C op cross C, we could transform P into Q. Now, what would that look like in greater detail? Well, Brendan didn't really talk about it in detail, um, but it would look something like this. So, oh my gosh, oh, that's horrible. This is, C op cross C here, sorry. Um, C uh, op cross C. Okay. Um, this is kind of a, uh, 
poor man's, um, come on, okay, um, come on, C up cross C, okay, um, well, now we've gotten ourselves in a pickle, um, oops, no, I don't want to go to that, I meant to press the thing to, okay, there we go, um, okay, uh, reset this, that's what I want, okay, um, Okay, natural transformations between profunctors here can be phrased like this. If we think about what this is in the background, what, what does it mean to go from P to Q? It looks like this. So P is a functor. Um, this is uh, a profunctor, but that's just a functor from C off cross C into C. So P is a functor from this special category, and Q is a functor from that same category. So here we are, here is this category, um, C up cross C. Um, and what, is a morph what does an object look like? Well, it's a pair of objects from C and C. Um, so it's like A cross B, for example, is a pair of objects. A prime cross B prime is a pair of objects. Morphisms here have one morphism going this way and one morphism going that way. If we were looking at C cross C, this is why I didn't want to see, see it. Um, uh, this F would have been going this way. Um, but because we're looking at C off cross C, F is going this way from A prime to A. And G is going from B to B prime. Um, and, and that's going to be important. Um, so here we have this uh, nice. Um, Nice mapping. So it maps. Uh, we have these, and then we have these these arrows. So where does Q, where does P map it? Well, P maps A cross B into this guy here. And I, what I'd really like to do is, um, uh, no, no, not this one. Um, yeah, this one. Um, so uh, what this should really show is, uh, and I'll wield my pen, um, and perhaps like a week and a half ago in the Star Phoenix, it will be mightier than the sword. So here we'll uh, draw with, uh, with P, how does P map these morphisms? Well, P map these morphisms into PFG. It maps the profunctor P maps A cross B into P of AB, that pair. It maps A prime cross B prime into P of A prime cross B prime. Um, this is some set, right? Like PAB is a set. It's the profunctor applied to that set. So if the profunctor is the home profunctor, it's the set of all paths from A to B, right? Um, this, is, this is some set. If, if the profunctor is one that tells us all the transportation routes, the modalities to get from Saskatoon to Seattle, this will tell us the set of ways to get from Saskatoon to Seattle, right? Um, um, and same thing with P A prime to B, B prime. This P F G thing, um, that's just lifting F and G. So F goes A prime to A, G goes B to B prime. And so PFG will map, PFG is a mapping of sets from one set to the other. It takes in particular, um, takes things that know how to turn A's into B's and turns them in, that's a set, uh, a set of those things um, uh, and turns them into things that turn A prime into B primes. Um, so that's a set, and this, this is a, a function between sets. It takes each element here and it turns it into an element here. Imagine this is P is the Hom profunctor. It takes all morphisms going from A to B and it turns them into morphisms going from A prime to B prime. How? By first doing F and then doing the thing that's part of this, this one and then doing G. That would be for the home profunctor. That is kind of a, a point of reference, right? Um, okay. Um, 
So that's what that's what P does to these morphisms. Q maps A prime to sorry A cross B into QAB. That's a set too. Um, it maps A prime cross B prime into Q A prime comma B prime. That's a set as well. Um, in, in some sense, it summarizes how to go from A prime to B prime. QAB summarizes how to go from A to B according to the profunctor Q, because we're, we're discussing how you turn P's into Q's. Um, so we're minding our P's and Q's. Um, and, uh, and you know if we lift these morphisms using uh, that, that their profunctor, will go something like this, right? Um, so it'll, it'll map it into this function between these sets. Um, okay, um, so that's the job of profunctors to map objects to objects and morphisms to morphisms. We heard it first with functors. Um, uh, not a lot different here, except we have this kind of pairs of things and one's flipped in this non, way that probably seemed foreign initially, but hopefully is growing on you. Um, it automatically takes care of the reasoning about paths. But what's this thing alpha? Well, this is the uh, heart of the natural transformation. We're dealing here with a natural transformation from P to Q. And a natural transformation says, for each object in the source category, we translate, how does P, where does P map it to and to where does Q map it to? Mm. Um, it has to be a morphism, right? It, it goes from where P maps it to, to where Q maps it to. You know, it goes from the head of the human to the head of the dog. It says where headness goes when you consider going from a human to a dog. And it maps the hand of the human into the paw of the dog. Um, and, and so here we have um, a, uh, a, a natural transformation. It is specific to objects in the source category, the head. Um, and it will show you how to get from the head of the, the human to the head of the dog, right? What are the objects in the source category? Oh, they're pairs, like A cross B. We'll write it as A comma B. And so we're gonna have a component of the natural transformation alpha between these things to map from P to Q, that component is going to say for AB, this is how you get from the head of the human to the head of the dog. Um, uh, Q, uh, alpha A prime B prime says, how do you get from the hand of the human to the hand to the paw of the dog? Um, and 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 so this is the naturality square that we're used to. It has to commute. Uh, we can first translate from P to Q and then lift this uh, with F and G. And we have to get to the same place, Q, A prime, B prime, the same set as if we first lifted with P and then went over with this natural transformation to Q. Um, so that's what it means to have a, uh, a natural transformation between profunctors, uh, something right along those lines. Ah, and I should really um, complete the picture by correcting this gross, um, uh, this gross problem. So there we go. Uh, uh, um, there we go. Okay. Um, so that is the picture and I'll just uh, paste that in the slide. So I don't remember. Okay, great. We, um, we have those dotted things in the screenshot. That's not what I want. There we go. Uh, okay, so naturality squares, that gave meaning to what this, uh, this natural transformation means. And every one of these arrows here, every one of these morphisms is a natural transformation from one profunctor to another. This is a category of profunctors. Uh, P and R are profunctors here, and these are natural transformations.
So that's what Prof C is. We'll soon be using Prof C as our kind of category of source for a functor, but this, this is just bear in mind what it is. There's another category involving profunctors where the objects are categories and the profunctors are morphisms, but this is the category of profunctors and natural transformations. Profunctors are the objects. Um, and often in category theory, you deal with these different categories for different purposes. Um, okay. So that's uh, that's the uh, idea. We can get rid of this vestigial thing and and put this in in its stead. Um, okay, uh, right. Uh, okay. So here's here's the next step in this enterprise. So we're trying to explain um, profunctor optics in this other way. We had one way of doing it in terms of these diagrams. Um, and we're, Brendan and, and um, uh, Mitchell Riley are, you know, are having this other, other approach, um, Mitchell, uh, Mitchell's uh, approach, which Brendan then sort of helps uh, summarize and, um, and express uh, in different words. Um, okay, so now suppose you have that category. Whoa, that category that we uh, saw here, this category. Objects are profunctors, morphisms and natural transformations. Okay, now guess what? Um, for each of those profunctors, we could evaluate it at A comma A prime. That's, that's some, uh, that's our some, uh, some, objects uh, in this category, um, uh, C op cross C. These are all profunctors uh, associated with C from C op cross C into set. So um, all it's going to do is uh, for a given profunctor here, like P, it'll, it'll evaluate it and a given object in C op cross C like uh, a comma A prime. What is that profunctor there? It's a set, it's a set. I mean, the profunctors mapping, each of these profunctors maps C up cross C into set. So if you evaluate it C at A comma A prime, it'll give you a setback. It's not to say it'll set you back, um, but it will give you back a set, okay? Um, okay, um, so, there's a functor, a functor, no less, ladies and gentlemen, which maps from this category of profunctors and natural transformations into set by evaluating any of these profunctors, any of these objects, it maps objects to objects, maps therefore each profunctor like P into PAB over in set, right? Um, uh, it maps uh, Q into, Q, sorry, P into P A prime, A A prime, uh, which is a set in set. It maps Q into Q A A prime, which is a set in set. Um, so that's what its job is in life. It maps, takes these profunctors and maps them into sets. That is the evaluation of the profunctor on A A prime. Um, that's a kind of handy little functor. Um, it, it turns out it operate, also operates on morphisms, but we, we won't dwell on that. Um, and, and this little dash just means like, oh, it's, it's like it takes the P as an argument. <laughs> it, takes the, it takes the profunctor as an argument. Um, what thing it evaluates it for depends on the profunctor. So here, you know, for different values of this, different different objects of this, different different um, profunctors, you, you substitute each in turn into that. It just says for each of these objects, plug in a a prime to it and we'll get a set. That's a functor. Okay, great. This is another functor. This is a functor that plugs in b b prime. Okay, great. Uh, each of these functors turns each profunctor into a particular set, but they turn them into different sets. 
If A and prim is different from B, B prime, they turn them into different sets. These turn them into sets over here. And that's the provunctor is evaluated by A, A prime. This one into B, B prime. And here's the thing. So that's, by the way, I'm expressing just this thing right up here. That's what, what, that's what this means. Um, okay. Uh, well, it turns out there's, these are functors. And wherever this functors going from the same source category to the same target category, one can think about a natural transformation. And you may say, well, wait, this diagram looks just like this one. Isn't it the same? No. What's on the left, what's on the right is set in both cases, but what's on the left here is C op cross C. This is, this is like for each of these functors, they're mapping uh, like this and a natural transformation is just shown here. Um, what's shown here is prof C, like these, this is all these objects in this category, right? That's, that's what that is. Um, so, so this was kind of zooming in on each arrow. What does that arrow mean? What does it mean? It means it's a natural transformation of P to Q. That's kind of the micro scale. This is like zoomed out and where we're just dealing with those profunctors as, as, as objects and evaluating them for this. And there's a natural transformation here. And it turns out that roughly speaking, putting aside some monoidal structure, um, uh, an optic is a natural transformation from, from a given profunctor being applied to AA prime to that same profunctor being going from B to B prime. Now, um, that may sound like, oh my gosh, that's, that's really weird. It's, it's parameterized by P. Okay, so it's like for each profunctor, an optic gives me a way to turn things that turn A into A primes into things that turn B into B primes. Where have we heard that before? Well, we heard it before and like here, right? Um, if we had a way to turn P's into P primes, think A into A prime, then whatever that way is, we get a corresponding way to turn, to turn W's into W primes, think B's into B primes. It, it gives us this way of mapping from ways to turn P's into P primes into ways to turn W to W prime. Now that's, I find that kind of confusing how that's said. For each way to turn a P into P prime, we get a very particular way to turn a W into a W prime. And the reason it's the same profunctor here is, well, you know, if this profunctor is giving us um, sets of, of ways to go from A to A prime, we'll get sets of ways, we'll turn those into sets of ways to get from B to B prime. Um, but if the profunctor is like mapping it to the cost of going from A to A prime, as we had with profunctors going to V categories and rich categories, um, putting aside, we're not dealing with that at the moment, then we get the cost of going from B to B prime. If, if what this meant with the profunctor was whether we could get from A to A prime, we get whether we can get from B to B prime through the optic. Um, if the optic summarized ways to get from you know, Saskatoon to Seattle, this would give us ways to get, excuse me, ways to get from, let's say, uh, Calgary to Seattle, then this would give us ways to get from um, Saskatoon to Seattle, something like that. Um, um, okay, so, so the idea is, roughly speaking, a profunctor is, uh, sorry, an optic is a way that's parameterized by profunctors. In other words, you give it a profunctor to go from A to P to B prime, whatever that profunctor is, whether it summarizes cost or whether it summarizes feasibility or summarizes modalities or summarizes morphisms, ways to get, you know, particular ways, then you get a corresponding set. So for each of those, we get a way of mapping from W to W prime. Um, we, for, so for each feasibility, 
relationship, um, we get a feasibility relationship from W to W prime or each cost here, you get a cost to go W to W prime or for each you know, modality here, we get a modality to go from here to here. Um, so that's, that's the idea. And uh, in the exposition, um, it gets, uh, it gets then a little bit hairy with what are called Tambara modules. And I didn't have time, unfortunately, to put together nice slides with this. If you're interested, you could follow these videos, but it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty intense going. The idea is that, look, there are these profunctors in general, but, there are these, uh, but profunctors aren't guaranteed to lift to operate on this tensor thing. They, they don't necessarily nicely play with something tensored with them. Uh, we need something that will lift up to to also apply to tensored things that are tensored with it up here, and it turns out that these things called Tambara modules, um, which which do exactly that, they allow you to tensor something here. It's M cross A, M tensor A, and M tensor A prime. Um, uh, they allow you to kind of generalize the profunctor uh, in that direction. And it has some nice properties involving commuting squares where you have N and Ms and you, you have this nice um, commuting property and then it gets fuzzier to me and um, mumble. But basically there are these equalities associated with it. This is unitality. And um, this I think is, I don't know, maybe associativity. In any case, it, it's, uh, uh, it gets quite particular about the properties. These are just the properties of Tambara modules. And Tambara modules basically are subclass of profunctors that allow you to handle this, this kind of parallel um, map here because we need to map things that are, that are um, tensored with, um, with P to things that same thing tensored with P prime. Um, and uh, basically you do that and <laughs> again, it's fuzzy, uh, but um, you get a, a, nice, um, uh, a nice relationship. And it turns out, and this is where it all comes together in Brendan Fong's lecture, that um, if you have this Tambara modules and you map them, instead of mapping just profunctors to set, you, you restrict yourself to these nice behaved Tambara modules that that play nicely with things minoidally combined with them. Um, if you do that and you, you, you consider those and you consider all mappings, all natural transformations going from AA prime to, to BB prime, basically these are profunctors. They're just a special, especially nice profunctors. And you consider the natural transformations. It turns out that they are exactly on a one-to-one -one basis. It's just the same thing as optics. So, and and way Brendan Fung said it, I kind of like it. You can listen to it here. But he says the only natural ways of turning oh um, P A B to P A prime sorry P A A primes uh, into um, P, B, B primes, the only natural ways of doing this are through this structure, um, this sort of structure. That, that's the only way, the structure that has these nice uh, category or these nice properties that you can, you don't have to worry which side of it on. In other words, it's exactly this. These give you all the ways of turning P of AA primes into P of PB primes for any P. Um, if you kind of map them out, they're exactly the things that correspond to this, that, that have all these possibilities for what you have here, but collapse down treats these as the same. They, they don't treat it separately if F is on this side versus F is on that side. It's just something that maps up at the top and which side it's on is irrelevant. And that's exactly what this co does. So in short, it says, hooray, this, these things are basically um, uh, the same. Uh, the profunctor way of looking at them is 
at a deep level the same as kind of this optic uh, way, and therefore we can we can capture profile we could capture optics with profunctors. All optics can be captured with profunctors. Um, and the the profunctors then have these natural transformations that go from ways to turn, um, where is it? Ways to turn uh, A's into A primes into ways to turn B's into B primes. Um, so that's kind of the picture. Um, uh, and it's it's very dense and it's presented to other other category theorists and and uh, interested parties fairly advanced but um, it basically gets the picture why this works um, and why it corresponds so directly to these sort of structures um, where we fill in the hole and then we get the mapping of these why that handles all these cases of where we need to map from a primes into BB primes for any profunctor. Um, it is captured by that structure. Anyway, it's 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 dense stuff, and Mitchell Riley's paper is even denser. And you know, at an actual implementation level, uh, it can look a little bit um, uh, complex from Jeremy Given's talk. Uh, it turns out if you if you really work to understand this, um, it ends up all making sense, like why this works. And we've already gone over time here, um, and I have to get on with our Alberta collaborators in just a minute. But um, the the basic deal I've I've tried to explain explain here what's going on. But essentially, um, there's some quite deep sort of invariants that are being being captured here. And I think Jeremy D Gibbons does a pretty good job of explaining why these work. Um, but I've added some, some comments uh, in here about, about how these work. And one of the key factoids that helps understand how these work is that an, an adapter IDID, so adapter AB is itself a profunctor um, uh, that, that can be expressed um, so it can be, you can lift it. Um, an adapter AB implemented in a classic way can have a die map associated with it. Um, uh, adapter uh, uh, AB, um, A and B are, are associated with um, uh, types uh, associated with these, uh, uh, these uh, the, the profunctor. And if you have an adapter OI, this is one um, there's the getter and there's the uh, updater. Uh, and it turns out you can lift it with F and G by just pre-composition and, and post-composition, um, which uh, is something that uh, this, uh, this expresses here. And uh, that allows you to kind of then lift an adapter a, uh, ID to get a, um, adapter AB, AB, an adapter, an, an adapter AB, IB, I think, and, um, or an adapter, uh, adapter P, AB, IB, I think, and, and then that will, this L sort of turns that into an adapter P, ABST. Anyway, it's, it's a little bit uh, complex. So um, I don't want you to worry, certainly about that. Um, but the basic idea is that optics um, have this very particular structures. They have this huge variety of different types that they um, uh, that they express. Uh, they're really useful. They're useful in dynamical systems. They're useful in uh, programming. They're useful in game theory. They're useful in machine learning, uh, and uh, they're useful. Uh, in, in the context of databases. And um, uh, the, the structurally speaking, they're of this form. Um, they can be expressed in this construct of a co-end, which is like this long, um, um, this or this or this or this, um, but where we collapse together things that are functionally equivalent. 
Um, and uh, having so done that, it turns out you can realize that those are can be viewed equally much so as mappings between profunctors, as natural transformations between profunctors, um, uh, between profunctors from uh, AA prime to the same profunctor from B to B prime, which almost invites this sort of uh, implementation with um, where profunctors are mappings from, where is it? Um, mappings from uh, PAB to PST. Um, these are our profunctors. Uh, so they're, they're mappings there. And that's why that works. And that's why it works for all optics. Any optic that can be captured with that structure can be captured with this. Uh, and it's quite nice. And again, some of those optics are really interesting things. Lenses, prisms, uh, useful. The ability to compose them that comes with optics, incredibly useful. Um, uh, the fact that it's closed, uh, uh, very useful. Um, but, uh, but what you can do with their functionality with those things like traversals, or, but particular kaleidoscopes or grates, these algebraic lenses, is really impressive. Um, and it, it could be quite useful in scientific computing and modeling. Um, OK, so um, that's all for today. And Monday, we're going to be talking about uh, going into this um, treatment of polynomial functors. Um, and we'll see dynamical systems through that light. And you'll see lenses come in there in this uh, familiar form. Uh, of lenses, and particularly lenses in the context of dynamical systems, where we have output readouts and we have update steps. Okay, so thank you very much for your attention, and hopefully that offers some uh, points of interest. Oh, um, I think I will use, I had asked you to think about your questions, and I apologize for not having the time to do this today. I think on Monday, We'll, we'll take as much of time as you want to answer questions before we, we really go into that material. I'll, uh, I'll prioritize that. And uh, if we have to use the whole session for questions and discussion, I'll be glad to do that. And then we can go on to, uh, to polynomial functors and their use in dynamical systems uh, when, when you're feeling your questions are answered and your points of discussion, okay? Thank you.